You might think that being in a non-actuarial science program is going to put you at a disadvantage for becoming an actuary. It can make you feel concerned, maybe even second guess whether getting into the career is a good idea. But the truth is it does not have to put you at a disadvantage. Yes, there are some benefits in being in an actuarial science program, but there are also benefits in being in a non-actuarial science program. If you are someone that wants to be an actuary but wasn't able to get into an actuarial science program, or maybe didn't want to major in actuarial science, or has already already graduated with a different degree, then first write down below in the comments, put a big that's me to let me know, and then make sure you watch the rest of this video to learn what three things you're going to need to do a little bit differently to make sure that you still succeed. I'm Bria, an associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator Community, where we train future actuaries how to become top candidates and get their very first actuarial dream job. So now let's get into this video. Three, two, one, go. Many actuarial science programs offer an internship or a co-op option for their undergrad. This is something that was available at my school, the University of Waterloo, and it was a great way for me to be able to gain on-the-job actuarial experience, also to improve my technical skills and my communication skills. I was able to get on-the-job projects that I could talk about on my resume and during interviews. It was also a really great way to get familiar with the corporate environment and make connections in the actuarial and the insurance industry. Internships are great, but but the programs are very competitive and for non-actuarial science majors, it may not even be an option for you to get opportunities like this through your program or after you've graduated. So to match the experience that an actuarial science major would have from an internship, there are two things I highly recommend you do. The first would be to go outside of your school and look for internships and co-op opportunities. A co-op and an internship are both the same things, they're just different names. Now, a lot of the time, internships are held for students that are still in school and are planning to work for a term and then go back to school afterwards, but sometimes employers are willing to let grads. An alternative to an internship, if you're not able to find one or it's just out of the question, is to get a stepping stone position. Now, if you've watched this channel for a while, you know that a stepping stone position is really a position that's going to help you gain some related experience in a field that is similar to the actuarial field. So in these types of positions, you're getting the opportunity to learn a lot of your technical skills, you're getting the opportunity to improve your communication skills, you get on the job experience, probably using a lot of data and maybe even some insurance concepts. These are great ways to make up for an actuarial internship. It's also a great way for you to build connections and network. And by the way, if you are a member of the Actuary Accelerator community, all the internship opportunities are highlighted in orange on our Actuary Accelerator community job board. Now, the second thing that you're going to want to do to make up for an actuarial internship, and this is really, really, really important, is to go out of your way to learn actuarial terms and concepts. You you see in a stepping stone position that's not really in the insurance industry, which is totally fine. It's just that you might not really get exposure to those insurance terms and those actuarial concepts. So you wanna learn those things from a different source. So you do really need to go out of your way to make sure that you have a good understanding of those concepts that typically someone in an actuarial science program that has an internship would gain. And if you can even do some projects that allow you to implement and actually use those terms and concepts, it's going to be even better. So if you are a member of the Actuary Accelerator community, head to the Intermediate Candidate Phase Module 3 to learn a whole bunch of actuarial terms and concepts in our Actuarial Terms and Concepts Library. And then you can head to the Rising Candidate Phase if you haven't already done that section, Module 3, and you'll find lots of actuarial Excel projects that you can use to practice your Excel skills, but also to gain a better understanding of those terms and concepts. Okay, so my cat Akila wanted to join me for this one. So many actuarial science programs will have whole courses, whole classes that teach you the concepts that you need to know for actuarial science exams. At some schools, you can even get credit for full exams just by getting good enough grades in certain courses. That means that for actuarial science students, you don't tend to have to do as much studying outside of the classroom as you'd have to do if you are a non-actuarial science student. That's because students in the actuarial science program are learning these concepts in the classroom. They're getting tested on them for midterms and finals, so they constantly need to be studying from them that whole time. But for a non-actuarial science student, obviously this isn't the case. You're going to have to dedicate more time outside of the classroom, specifically studying for your actuarial exam. It might even mean that your study plan is a little bit different too, because as an actuarial science student, you're going to be able to probably skip over the majority of the first phase of studying, which is when you're going through all of your study materials and really learning the actuarial concepts and the math terminology that's on the exam. Since an actuarial science major will have learned that 
already in school, they won't have to do as much of that as a non-actuarial science major would probably have to. So you're going to have to spend a large chunk of your time on that portion and then move on to the second and third phase of studying, which is doing lots of practice problems and practice exams. So although you are going to have to spend more time studying outside of the classroom and outside of your schoolwork, this is actually really beneficial for you in some ways because it means that you're going to be able to tell employers later on that you are able to manage your time well enough to keep up with your schooling if you're still in school. You're also able to pass actuarial exams and hopefully you're also able to work in a stepping stone position. Doing all three of those things at the same time requires a lot of time management and that's something you really need in an actuarial position too because you are going to have to study for exams at the same time as you're working full-time in your actuarial role. So this will be a great thing to bring up during interviews and it'll help make your candidacy for the actuarial job even better. Now next we're going to move on to the third thing that you're going to have to do differently than an actuarial science major. But before that, if this video has been helpful for you so far, could you please give it a thumbs up to let me know and help it spread to more future actuaries. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As a non-actuarial science major or someone that has already graduated, you often don't get the same amount of support that you'd get on your actuarial journey if you were an actuarial science major. Actuarial science majors, they tend to have an actuarial science club, actuarial advisors, and they're constantly being surrounded by other future actuaries that are going after the same goal as they are. As someone not in that situation, it can start to feel really hard to keep motivated to stay on this actuarial journey. It can be hard to find the resilience. It can be hard to find that strive to keep moving forward. So it's really important as a non-actuarial science major to go out of your way to make sure that you are getting the support and the guidance that you need to help get you through this. What I've found when achieving huge goals like becoming an actuary is that surrounding yourself with other people that are doing and going through the same exact journey as you are can be so extremely beneficial. When you see others achieving great things, you see them passing actuarial exams, learning technical skills, getting internship or stepping stone positions, it makes you want to continue moving forward and pushing forward even though sometimes you might not feel like it. It's actually the main reason that I started our AAC, our Actuary Accelerator Community Members Only WhatsApp group because that means all the members in there are able to support each other, motivate each other, and help keep everyone moving forward in the right direction all together. It's a great place for our members to be able to go to get advice and feedback and support when things aren't going the way that they want them to go. And honestly, this one feature of the AAC is what keeps a lot of our members motivated every single day to keep going forward. Okay, so no matter if you are an actuarial science student or you're a non-actuarial science student or you're someone that has already graduated with a non-actuarial science degree, you might be concerned that things like maybe a low GPA, not having an internship, or starting your actuarial journey late are things that are going to hold you back from success in the actuarial career. And that does absolutely not have to be the case. So make sure you go watch this video next all about actuarial career killers so you can learn how to overcome those situations. That's all for this week and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.